Ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, my name is Paul Martin. I'm the Deputy Director General uh, for Strategy and Innovation at DeCity, and I lead the implementation of Advanced Queensland. So can I begin by uh, acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Turbal and Yuggera people, and uh, in doing so, may I acknowledge all of our elders, those guiding us currently and those who have passed. So just a couple of housekeeping things before we begin. Uh, the uh, emergency exits are in the unlikely event of something happening are to the right and left of the theatre. The facilities are in the foyer uh, as you came in. Um, and also just to make sure everyone's aware, uh, today's session is being recorded and live streamed uh, to people who can't make it here physically today. So uh, today we're here to talk about the Platform Technologies Program, which was recently released as part of the Advanced Queensland suite of initiatives to grow Queensland's uh, innovation-led economic growth. So today, I just want to give you a little bit of context around what we're going to do. So we will talk about um, the Platform Technologies Program in the Advanced Queensland context. Um, and what I'm going to seek to do is to give you a bit of an insight into the philosophy of the program, the policy intent, because I think that really helps when considering your application. We're then going to talk about eligibility and the process uh, for the scheme. We then got 25 minutes for questions and answers. And what I'd like to say to you is, if you, wanna, uh, if you wanna ask a question then by all means, please keep your questions to that session because I think many of the matters will be covered as we go through. If your question isn't answered at that session, come back and talk to us later. We're happy to, happy to have a chat. We are then going to talk about uh, the first recipient of funding under the Platform Technologies Program, which is the remotely piloted uh, aircraft systems project. And we've actually got a number of speakers who are involved in that project at the moment. And we've got them along. It's a great story. It's a great project. But it also, I think, helps to illustrate some of the things this scheme is trying to achieve. So again, in terms of framing up your application, that will be, uh, that will be of assistance. We're hoping to uh, finish by 11. We know your time is valuable. So we're going to try and be on time as well. So thank you very much. So just a little bit about this program. So uh, in the 2016-17 Queensland State Budget, uh, the Platform Technologies Program was funded as part of the second wave of Advanced Queensland. And this program was very clearly situated in uh, unlocking the potential of Queensland business to innovate and with a strong industry focus. In the development of the guidelines uh, and the approach of this program. We've been guided by our Advanced Queensland Expert Panel, which has some of Queensland's leading entrepreneurs, researchers, and thinkers in innovation. And I just wanted to give you a sense of some of the things the Expert Panel was saying to us as we developed this program. So the three key points. The first one is around ambition. The Expert Panel said to us, we need to aim for projects that are transformative, projects that drive a step change in what is happening here in Queensland. They urged us to really go for the, for the projects that are going to do the big changes. So that's the first point they made. The second point was around convergence. And the expert panel uh, was very strong on the concept that individual platform technologies are important. But to some degree, it's how we actually bring those technologies together where the, the really significant opportunities may lie. And they talked about the concept of a system of systems. How do you bring together multiple technologies to really deliver an outcome? So that idea of convergence and that idea of how do you bring together uh, drones, sensors, Internet of Things, et cetera, into a, a total project is something we're very interested in. And the third thing is around process. Now, some of you may have applied for government grants before, and you do know that it takes a bit of time. What the expert panel said to us is, you need to give people an indication early about how they're going to go. Okay? And so we've really taken that on board. And, in, and the process that we've designed here, and, and it will be explained to you later, is about giving an early indication of your prospects of success. And having people only have to do a full scale application with everything that's involved in that if you know you've got a serious chance. Okay? So we're not going to put you through the hoops if we're not seriously interested in what you've got to do. Okay? So that's, that's our commitment to you, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. So let's talk about three key drivers uh, for the program, R&D, industry, and collaboration. I'm going to start by talking about R&D. All of you will know that R&D is a spectrum. This program is at the D end of R&D. 
okay? It is about the development and deployment of platform technologies in industry in Queensland on the ground. This uh, program has a strong commercial focus. We're on about uh, combining research and development, testing, demonstration trials, commercialisation activities to speed that deployment. And we're on about the use of these technologies to solve challenges facing industry or to create new opportunities. So it's at the D end. That's not to say that research isn't involved, it is, but it's very much a commercialisation focus and a wanting to get projects that are close to market. Industry. This program is very clearly positioned, and the guidelines make this very clear, around uh, being of benefit to Queensland's key industries. So where, do we, where does Queensland have a competitive advantage now, or could have a competitive advantage? So actual or potential competitive advantage. We want to see projects that actually have customers here in Queensland. So you can actually develop and deploy your technology with customers here. But in so doing, you can create opportunities to scale globally. So start here, benefit our industries, drive productivity gains here, but create global opportunities, and particularly those niches in supply chains where Queensland can really grow and be strong. We're interested in attracting investment into Queensland industry, uh, whether local, uh, from across the country, or internationally. We want to see that investment coming in to take Queensland R&D and speed its deployment into industry. And what we're also after is a spillover to multiple sectors. What we'd love to see are projects that can achieve significant productivity gains or new products or services in one sector, but have the ability, and this is the great thing about platform technologies, to hop over into other sectors. So the industry focus on this is really important. Now, what I want to say to you is the guidelines have a list of the, the government's priority sectors. That's not meant to be exclusive, but I think if you read that list, you'll see many of the sectors that you know, based on your common experience, that reflect where Queensland's competitive advantages lie. But we are also interested in diversifying our economy and creating those new industries of the future. So in your application, think about how is my project going to grow an, uh, an existing or potential Queensland industry that's going to really uh, help growth in this state. And the last point is around collaboration. And to some degree, all of our advanced Queensland projects have this strong theme about collaboration. Many of you will have seen that OECD research which says while Australia is great at generating knowledge, it's very poor at the collaborative activities that are needed to actually deliver that as a product or service. So we've taken that seriously, and collaboration is an important part of this project. So what we're after are collaborative projects that involve industry, that involve SMEs and startups, technology developers and researchers working together. Okay? It would be of an advantage to have customers and end users involved. Not only is that uh, good in terms of uh, sales at the end, but all of our experience suggests that having end users involved actually is, makes for a better product at the end and speeds the development process. One thing I do want to say to you all is the involvement of SMEs and startups in your collaborative project is essential. We really want to see uh, projects that not only are about the big players, but about bringing and creating opportunities for Queensland small businesses, and there are a lot of them doing great things, and startups and SMEs, we want to see them participating in these projects in a very serious and meaningful way. So that SME involvement is really important. Um, and creating those opportunities in that supply chain so they can learn from the big players, um, and so they can take that knowledge and they can actually grow their own businesses. And this whole idea of collaboration also is about creating networks and capabilities beyond this project. So you can imagine from a government point of view, we're funding your project. Okay? We want to see that your project delivers and it has great, in great impacts. But if as a result of your project, there are new linkages, new networks formed, new partnerships that actually lead to other successful projects beyond that. From our point of view, that's a fantastic return on investment, but also for the participating partners, it actually builds a better innovation ecosystem in Queensland. Okay? R&D, industry, and collaboration. Three really important points to remember about this pro what the policy intent of this uh, program is and things to think about as you put your project together. Now, what is the impact 
that we are after. The number one thing up there is jobs. Okay, and that will be of no surprise to any of you in terms of the priority of the government. Jobs. We want to create long-term, sustainable, knowledge-based jobs in Queensland. Okay? In accordance with the expert panel advice around ambition, we want to see transform, transformation in industry. New or, existing, uh, new or existing. We want to see a step change. Projects that really take things to the next level. We want to see global opportunities created. Increased competitiveness for our industries. Increased capability within Queensland to actually deliver complex platform technology programs. We want to see new networks, new investment, um, and SMEs and startups scaling. So really, it's easy to, to cross that threshold. No, look, we've seen projects, many projects, that can do exactly these things. And, but as I say, when you're thinking about the impact that your project is going to have, please keep these in mind. Okay. So what is a platform technology? Now, one of the things I want to make very clear to you is, in the guidelines, we list a whole range of what we would consider to be platform technologies. Uh, drones, sensors, the Internet of Things, autonomous vehicles, nanotechnology, etc. That is not meant to be a definitive list. Okay? We're not, you know, we know how quickly things are changing. We know how technology is moving and the forces of disruption. They're meant to illustrate for your purposes. For us, platform technologies are a group of technologies that can be used as a base upon which other applications, processes, or technologies are developed. So these platform technologies enable new products and services. So in effect, they're a catalyst. So just think about that as you sort of describe what your project is going to do. This whole idea of convergence, and I mentioned this with some feedback from our expert panel, is really important. So how are you bringing together multiple platform technologies into a system that's really creating a significant impact? And I think in, the, in most platform technologies you're going to see there'll be a big data component, there'll be you know, uh, uh, something related to the cloud, etc. Uh, you know, there'll be the way that you combine them in really clever and interesting and impactful ways will be something that we're going to be looking for. Okay? And again, there's this whole concept of your project having a wider application than just the sector you're working in immediately? Is there a spillover benefit to, of this platform technology uh, cluster that you're developing for other industries in Queensland? But as I say, if you've got a technology that you, you think is going to have a strong impact, that you think is going to speed the uh, development of new products and services, we're open. Okay? We're not being restrictive here. Uh, but uh, again, it is about uh, really proving your case. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about funding because it's always an important question and people always want to know what the, what the answer is here. So a couple of key principles. What we're after is $3 of non-Queensland government cash, cash for every dollar of platform technology funding. Three to one cash leverage. Okay. So if, uh, and we want a minimum project size of a million dollars. So that would be $250,000 of Queensland Government funding with $750,000 of non-Queensland Government funding. Now, we recognise clearly that there may be other governments funding that could be applied, uh, and we're, we're open to that, very open to that, but we do expect that at least 25% uh, of every project will be private sector, non-government cash, okay? So we want to make sure the private sector is clearly there. It is important to note at this stage that there is no maximum project size prescribed in terms of funding levels. So at present, the city has a $15 million program allocation for the platform technologies program. The potential benefits of project under, uh, projects under this fund are going to be significant for Queensland. We can see that already. All potential projects will be considered. Um, just remember, our focus is on impact. So clearly, the higher the level of funding that you request, the more leverage funding you have to have, and the bigger the impact your project has to demonstrate. If the level of funding for the best projects exceeds the available funding, the department will look at options to mobilise resources to fund those projects. We, within government, will work with applicants 
uh, to consider what other advanced Queensland projects uh, could be aligned to deliver on those, those really good quality, uh, impactful projects. We're, opening, uh, we're open to bundling uh, successful applications for multiple AQ programs together. And we're happy to have that conversation with you. And what I want to say to you is where regional job impacts are significant, we'd also look to work with our colleagues in the Department of State Development and in Treasury uh, to look at what options are available there. Because as you would appreciate from the government's point of view, uh, jobs in regional Queensland, where some areas are doing it particularly tough, is of great significance. So just to give you, again, just to the examples. So if the project of $2 million, for example, uh, half a million dollars of Queensland government funding, $1.5 million of funding from the project partners, and that's cash. If, for example, you had federal government funding or local government funding for the same project, half a, half a million dollars of Queensland government funding, you might have a million dollars of other government funding, but you'd always need at least 25% of private sector cash. Okay? So the reason I provide those examples is just to make sure that that, that is crystal clear. Uh, and the leverage requirement is really important to us, uh, three to one. So that kind of gives you a sense of the philosophy of the program, the impact we're trying to achieve, and that critical issue of how much funding is available. I'm going to ask my colleague, Elise Henry, uh, who is the director of our partnerships unit uh, and has responsibility for this program to come up and talk you through eligibility, uh, the assessment criteria and the process and we'll be able to take questions after that. So thank you Elise. Yeah, okay, that's working. Thanks, Paul. So as Paul mentioned, um, Partnerships team is taking Platform Technology Program forward. Um, we've got several people uh, in the audience today from our team. So uh, I know lots of people have questions today. So feel free after the session to come and find us. We'll make, make ourselves known after, um, after the end of the Q&A and please come and talk to us in a bit more detail. We'll be available today and moving forward. So what I wanted to talk about was um, the process and also eligibility and some of the criteria. So we'll start with who can apply. So NEOI requires a lead applicant and a minimum, a minimum of three core partners. The lead applicant must have in principle commitment from the partners. The submission has to have a defined project with indicative timeframes, budget breakdown and clarity around engagement of SMEs and startups in Queensland. To apply for funding, the lead applicant must be a business GST registered with an ABN and be able to demonstrate an ability to fund at least 75% of the total cost of the project. The lead applicant does not have to be based in Queensland but needs to have an Australian ABN and of course partner with Queensland companies. The government will enter, enter into a contract only with lead applicants. Special purpose vehicle arrangements will also be considered but must meet the same criteria as the lead applicants. As I mentioned, lead applicants must have a minimum of three core partners. They all need to be Queensland based. Partners cannot be related to the lead applicant, including subsidiaries. Applications will be strengthened by having more than three partners. For partners, Queensland based means the ABN must designate the organisation's main business location as Queensland. Partner organisations can include small to medium enterprise, startups, research organisations and customers and end users. While formal agreements don't need to be in place for the EOI stage, partners identified in the pro proposal must be committed. For any stage two submissions, letters of commitment and funding contributions must be evidenced. The process for the program involves two stages. Firstly, expression of, expression of interest is stage one, and then shortlisted applicants progressing to a full application will be stage two. The more complete and comprehensive the EOI and application is, the faster the process will be. So EOI applications can be submitted at any time through the platform technology page on the Advanced Queensland website. It's open now, it's available, there's an EOI form, it's quite simple to take you through that process. All applicants that submit an EOI will go through an eligibility assessment and the first batch of assessments for EOIs will commence by mid-March. 
Eligible applicants will progress to an assessment panel. The panel will include members with industry knowledge, but will also be able to access specialist expertise if required. The pan panel will assess against criteria, which I'll talk about a bit later, and then invite shortlisted applicants to pitch their project. The pitch process is an opportunity for applicants to deliver a short presentation to the panel with more details on their project. A they'll also address the selection criteria and take questions from the panel. Pitches will require the lead applicant to be involved, however we'd also encourage reps from the partner organisation to be involved in that pitch. They can be conducted in person or via video conference if required. Recommended applicants will then be invited to submit a full application and unsuccessful applicants will be notified as soon as possible. Moving on to stage two. So full applications will need to include a detailed response to each of the assessment criteria, plus the additional selection criteria of technical merit. The uh, full application will also need to include, include a detailed project plan, evidence of commitment from all partner organisations and a demonstration of the ability to fund 75% at minimum of total project costs. The panel will then assess full applications and all applicants will be notified of the outcome as soon as possible. Our aim is to make the process as streamlined and timely as possible. So there's four selection criteria for the EOI stage. That's impact, competitive advantage, collaboration and capability. So with impact, consider the, the, the panel will consider what's transformative about the project, is there scalability across sectors and will the project create jobs. For competitive advantage, the panel will think about will this strengthen Queensland's key industries or will it bring new capabilities to be applied in Queensland. For collaboration, think about is the pro project involving the full supply chain and has the customer and end user involvement been clearly identified. In relation to capability, the assessment panel will look at the track record of the team and also is there confidence about the ability to deliver new technologies. If you progress to stage two, technical merit will also be assessed. So that will assess the feasibility of the project, the scientific or technical merit and is the project well planned and achievable. Essentially the panel will be looking for submissions that demonstrate potential benefits that are really significant to Queensland. Of course creation of jobs, um, the commitment of a significant portion of the funding that's to be spent with Queensland SMEs and startups, impact across multiple sectors and networks and capabilities that are created beyond the life of the project. As I mentioned all potential projects will be considered. Keep in mind that we're looking for the projects with the most impact. When you're preparing your EOI or stage two application, consider how you might pitch this to an investor. What's the return on investment for Queensland, for particular industries or for the supply chain? Have you demonstrated why you need the level of funding being sought and have you outlined what the full project budget will be spent on? Think about the decision making process and ensure your application clearly demonstrates that there are significant gains to warrant this investment. The higher the level of funding requested, the greater the impact must demonstrate. The key messages to take away from today are is ensure you have a collaborative approach. We've talked about the project partners, making sure you've got at least three more will be welcomed. They need to be Queensland based. Clearly demonstrate the significant benefits for the state and provide clarity about the budget and your funding sources. As I mentioned earlier, all projects are in the mix, so please talk to us about if you're not sure of anything. There's also a number of other advanced Queensland initiatives that Paul's touched on that we can help connect you into or other partners that you might be able to meet. Um, so our contact details are here, we can circulate those, they're on the website um, and as I mentioned we'll be available to talk to you later today. Thank you. Obviously a lot to take in, I appreciate that, uh, but the guidelines are in front of you. So we've now got up to 25 minutes for questions, but what I would say is if, you're not, uh, if, you, if your question isn't answered today or you want to take it offline, very happy to do that after, after today or by phone. So we're open to your questions. We've got some mics if anyone yeah, needs so them. We've got, Michelle's got one there, Katrina's got one there. Okay, so um, in okay, so we're looking at this 
from quite a broad perspective, we, we have um, obviously a, we have a technology that that we'd like to bring to market yeah. that is uh, basically nil cost to produce, um, and and the rollout of that we've got um, large blue chip uh, companies in Australia um, throughout. Obviously, one of our investors as well as some people locally here, uh, blue chips as well as um, overseas blue chips that want to roll out the technology, um, but that rollout. What they're saying to us is they want to roll out pilots for those technologies, um, and they'll give um, full-time staff members to administer those pilots. Mm -hmm. In that case, would that be an in-kind contribution? Would that be a cash contribution? Because, I mean, it, 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 like we we have significant people being given to us under our direction that will be full-time on the project uh, in each company. So my initial thoughts without knowing more is that that's an in-kind contribution. However, obviously the creation of jobs is first and foremost in this project. So, so what I'd say, Phyllis, let's find out more about that individual circumstance after this and have a chat about it. Because it may be how it's structured and what, the, that, what that sort of looks like. Yeah. Other questions? Yes. Just we'll get the mic to the left. Yep. Absolutely. Michelle, so that will be at the responsibility of the of the lead applicant and the partners to determine who owns that IP and that you've got um, access to that. So government doesn't come into play in relation to IP. So that is up to the the lead applicant and the partners to sort through before, well, or during during the application process. I think it's fair to say if you go through the full application, we would want to see how you are that you have sorted the IP arrangements in order to avoid the project, uh, any disputes at a later stage. The, the point of IP, so essentially what it is, so the government does not take IP if it's for the project to sort out the IP package. Yeah. With all of our advanced Queensland projects, we, the government, are not seeking to own the IP. Okay? What we want is the private sector to own that IP and turn it into commercial outcomes that drive the jobs. It's not about us yeah, owning that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, yeah, because we all know when that's not sorted, that it can lead to a world of trouble. So, and particularly in a, in a commercialisation project, large scale, we would be hoping, well, we would be expecting the partners have arrangements in place. Yes, yes, to make sure we get it right, yeah. Oh, we've got one over here, sorry. Oh, yep. Thank you. I, I might have missed uh, the opening date, I assume, it, which it is today, but uh, is there a closing date or is this an ongoing? Sure. It's, it's open at the moment. It actually opened on the 16th of January, so you're available from um, any time moving forward to submit an EOI. Um, and there's, there's not a closing date as such. We will start um, uh, assessing the first batch of um, EOI applications in about mid-March. Thank you. So. Yeah. yeah. So government grants are typically 50% government funded versus 50% other funds, and this is 25%. Uh, so it seems to me like the grant's going to organisations that probably aren't as needy as typical organisations that are applying for government grants. Would any applications be rejected on the basis that they could probably go ahead without that funding? So a couple of issues there. So 50-50 uh, is not necessarily the norm these days. I think that's changed. Um, what we're looking for here is impact and additionality. So if a project's going to go ahead anyway, well, we're not going to invest government money in it. Um, but what we are looking, if government can catalyse or speed a project, that might take longer or might, that might not otherwise occur in, in Queensland. And our experience over time has been that uh, the participation of government, even at a small level, can make a significant difference for private sector partners in actually persuading boards and others to invest. Yeah. I understand the focus on jobs. Quick question, and if you can show significant uh, efficiency dividends within industry because of this project, not necessarily, and it would be indirect, I suppose, generating more jobs if you can show the efficiency, but if the focus 
was on efficiency dividends in delivering a range of operational or maintenance type stuff, would that be considered? Uh, yeah, sure. I think um, the Boeing presentation later on will actually be a really great example of that. Um, that's a, a, a great example of where uh, this this sort of project is, is showing where the, there's efficiencies for the whole whole supply chain. Um, so the guys from Boeing and Shell have a have a bit more detail later on that might help answer that. 